Hello everyone, this is Professor Nji Kun from Unimas. In this video, I am going to give you a lecture on torsion combined with bending and shear stresses. Huh? Torsion is seldom present alone, and in most practical cases will be combined with shear and bending stresses. So when shear stresses exist, diagonal cracking will start on the side face of a member where torsion and shear stresses are additive. Figure 4.3 in the next page shows a typical ultimate torsion and ultimate shear interaction diagram from which it can be seen that the beam's resistance to combine shear and torsion is less than that when subject to either effect alone. The effect of combined shear stress and torsional stress may therefore need to be considered and in this case, both shear and torsion are calculated on the basis of the same equivalent thin wall section previously described for torsional design. So in this interaction diagram here, you see that the applied shear force TED divided by the torsional resistance based on the concrete compressive strut TRD max. Okay the maximum value is 1 okay and then when shear x alone ved where the applied shear force is divided by vrd max which is the maximum shear resistance based on the concrete compressive strut the maximum value is also 1 when shear is acting alone but when shear and torsion is acting interactively then we have the interaction diagram for the torsion and shear so the recommended simplified approach to design is to ensure that the ultimate shear force ved and the ultimate torsional moment ted satisfy the interaction formula below which is ted over TRD max plus VED over VRD max should be smaller or equal to 1, which is equation 4.10 here. If this interaction equation is satisfied, the design of the shear and torsional links can be carried out separately, providing that the assumed angle of the compressive struts theta is the same for both torsional and shear design. However, for a solid rectangular section subject to relatively small torsional and shear stresses, neither shear nor torsional reinforcement is necessary if TED over TRDC plus VED over VRDC is smaller or equal to 1, which is given in equation 4.11 here. So VRDC is the shear capacity of the concrete given as the equation here where k is a function of d and it should be smaller or equals to 2 with d expressed in millimeter and then row 1 is the provided steel reinforcement for bending in which s1 is the area of tension reinforcement that extends beyond the length of lbd plus d eh, beyond the section considered and BW is the smallest width of the section in tension zone. TRDC is the torsional cracking moment which can be calculated from equation 4.1 for a shear stress equation to the desired tensile stress FCTD of the concrete, that is, from equation 4.1. So Q equals to T over 2 AK, where Q is the shear force per unit length, which is the shear flow, which is equals to the shear stress times the thickness of the hollow section TEF. And then T is the shear stress times TF times 2 AK. So when the concrete reaches its design tensile cracking strength FCTD, TRDC is equals to FCTD times TEF times 2 times the area AK. So that is equal to FCTK, which is the characteristic tensile strength of concrete divided by 1.5, which is the partial safety factor multiplied by TEF multiplied by 2AK, which is equal to 1.33 FCTK TED AK 
given in equation 4.12 here. It should also be noted that the calculation for ASW for shear gives the required cross-sectional area of both legs of a link, whereas equation 4.5 for torsion gives the required cross-sectional area of a single leg of a link. So this needs to be taken into consideration when determining the total link requirement. Furthermore, the additional area of longitudinal reinforcement for shear design must be provided in the tension zone of the beam, whereas the additional longitudinal reinforcement for torsion, given in equation 4.4, must be distributed around the inner periphery of the links. If you have bending stresses, where in most cases your, our structural member is subjected to bending, so when a bending moment is present, Diagonal cracks will usually develop from the top of fractural cracks. Huh? So the fractural cracks themselves only slightly reduce the torsional stiffness provided that the diagonal cracks do not develop. The final mode of failure will depend on the distribution and quantity of reinforcement present. When combined flexure and torsion is considered, the longitudinal steel for both cases can be determined separately. In the fractural tension zone, the longitudinal steel required for both cases can be added. However, in the fractural compressive zone, no additional torsional longitudinal steel is necessary if the longitudinal phase due to torsion is less than the concrete compressive force due to fracture. Next, we'll look at the design procedure for torsion combined with shear. So first, we design for shear using the variable strut inclination method. So we use the procedures previously described to determine the angle of inclination theta of the concrete compressive strut and the stirrup reinforcement to resist the shear forces. Also required is the additional horizontal tensile force, delta FTD. The angle theta should range between 22 degrees and 45 degrees so that cotangent theta is between 2.5 and 1.0. The value determined for theta should be used throughout the subsequent sections of the design. The second step in the design is to convert the section into an equivalent hollow box section of thickness T or TEF. Okay, so the equivalent hollow box section of thickness T is given as T is equals to the area of section over the perimeter of the section, which is A over U. So that for rectangular section, B times H, T is equal to A, which is B times H, and then the parameter is 2 times both B plus H. Eh? Then we calculate the area AK within the center line of the equivalent hollow box section. For a rectangular section, AK is equal to B minus T times H minus T. So what it means here is that if we have a rectangular section, and after we have determined the section thickness for the equivalent hollow section with the dimension T for the thickness of the hollow section, then the area for the parameter of the shear flow for the area AK is defined by this area AK here. Okay, so when this is B and this is H, then the area AK will be B minus T times H minus T. Yeah? And the parameter of the center line UK, which is the parameter of the area AK here, is 2 times in bracket B plus H minus 2T. Yeah? Okay, or you can add up H minus T plus B minus T plus H minus T plus B minus T again. So it gives you 2 times in bracket B plus H minus 2T and then cross bracket. And then thirdly, we check that the concrete section is adequate to resist the combined shear and torsion using the interaction condition. The interaction condition is checked using the following equation which was shown before which is TED over TRD max plus VED over VRD max should be smaller or equals to 1 
where TR dmax is equals to 1.33 V1 FCK TEF AK over cotangent theta plus tangent theta and V1 is equals to 0 0.6 times 1 minus FCK over 250 and then the fourth step in our calculation is to calculate the additional stir up reinforcement required to resist torsion the additional stir up reinforcement required to resist torsion is given by the following equation which is ASW over S is equals to TED over 2AK 0.87 FYK cotangent theta so this ASW is different from the one in shear link design eh? so the SW here refers to only one cross section of the vertical leg where in the design for shear the SW refers to two times the cross section of the shear links okay so we have to take note of that eh? So after we have done the calculation for the spacing S, the spacing S of the syrup should not exit the lesser of A, the parameter of the shear flow line over 8, and then B, 0.75D, or the least dimension of the beam's cross section. So in this case, the dimension B is the least dimension of the beam's cross section. Yeah? And then the stirrup should be of the closed type fully anchored by means of laps. So what this means here is that your link must have at least a lap okay, of the smallest dimension of the link over here. As opposed to normal link, normal shear link, normally we have just something like this. Okay. But in torsion link, we need something like this uh, for torsion. And then the fifth step is to calculate the total amount of stirrup reinforcement ASW over S. So this is the sum of the stirrup reinforcement for shear and torsion from steps 1 and step 4. Okay. And then the sixth step is to calculate the area AS1 of the additional longitudinal reinforcement. So the additional longitudinal reinforcement is given by AS1 is equals to TED times UK cotangent theta over 2AK times 0.87 FY1K as we have derived before. So this reinforcement should be arranged so that there is at least one bar at each corner with the other bars distributed equally around the inner periphery of the links space at not more than 350mm center to center. So that's all for the lecture in this video. Thank you very much for listening.